Welcome back. Even though the 2017 football season hasn't gone according to plan for North Dakota, there were signs in recent weeks that things might be turning around. With the most obvious example coming last weekend in the Fighting Hawks 48 to 21 road win at Portland State. UND was looking to make it two road wins in a row this Saturday, though the task would always be tough against number 17 Southern Utah. Another week, another night game for Keaton Studsrud and company. UND was looking to get off to a strong start in the mountains of Cedar City, but they find themselves trailing 14 nothing midway through the first quarter. We pick it up here because that's when John Santiago does this. The junior All-American takes the toss. He juked out a linebacker and he is gone 63 yards to the house. 31st career touchdown for Santiago. Watch that initial move again. Just jukes out the linebacker. Good luck stopping that. Now after a Thunderbird touchdown made it 20 to 7, UND strikes back. Keaton Studsrud to Noah Wanzik. Seven yards out early second quarter. Southern Utah would answer right back. Quarterback Patrick Tyler lobs one up. Alex Croyle wins the jump ball in the end zone. 27-14 Thunderbirds at the half. UND would answer the bell to open the third. Studs to Wanzek again. This time from 18 yards out, the Fighting Hawks are back within one score at 27-21. After a defensive stop, North Dakota gets the football back. But Demon Mercer can't control the handoff on the jet sweep. Southern Utah falls on it and it would lead to this coming up on a fourth and one. Jay Green rumbles in from five yards out for his third rushing score of the game to make it 34 21. And then two possessions later, UND would drive deep into Thunderbirds territory. Keaton Studs are trying to do too much on a second and two play. He's picked off by Jermaine Dobbs, the second of four second half turnovers for the road team and a backbreaker for UND's chances. Just four plays later, Taryn Beasley seals the T-Birds' fifth straight win with this 51-yard touchdown scamper. 47-21 the final on this one. John Santiago finishes with 115 rushing yards. The second time he's hit the century mark on the ground this season. His effort part of a 445-yard day for the UND offense, but that wasn't enough to overcome those four second-half turnovers and a dominant performance from the Thunderbirds in the run game and through the air. In the end, it all adds up to another tough defeat for North Dakota. You know, in the first half, I thought the offense did, uh, you know, we did just about everything we could. You know, um, passing and running the ball. I thought the guys up front did a good job. Um, got some push on some big guys on Southern Utah's D-line. And then, you know, there's just a few plays in the second half that, uh, um, you know, kind of slowed our momentum down. Those interceptions killed us. Uh, if, we, if we limit the turnovers, then I think uh, we give ourselves a chance. Offense, I really think we were, we had them. We were moving the ball how we needed to move the ball, and they were handling stuff. Defense, we just, again, like just lack of focus. I don't know. We got bounced back. Got to figure out something. I mean, you can let it frustrate if you want, but I don't really, I don't really look at it like that. I just, you know, you know going through the week, just plan for the game, and then come in the game to try to you know, give everything you got. You know, uh, like coach preaches, good body language and just keeping everything up no matter the circumstance. So, I mean. You can let things frustrate you or you can let or you can go out there and fight. So, you know, I'd rather go out there and fight. Meanwhile, in Cedar Falls, Iowa, Chris Strebler and the Coyotes looking for win number eight against Northern Iowa. South Dakota would strike first. Strebler finds Josh Hale to cap a seven play, 75 yard opening drive. Part of a career day for Hale. He finished with six catches for 151 yards and that score. 13-6 Yotes in the second, but UNI draws even right here. Eli Dunn finds a wide open Isaiah Weston, 59 yards scoring strike. But USD would still lead 16 to 13 at the half. Northern, they'd add to their edge on the first drive of the third quarter. Brett Sampson, the tight end for USD with an 11 yard touchdown run. That would put the Yotes up 10 but look out for the home team. The Panthers answer a few minutes later. Dunn to Weston again, this time from four yards out. Two of Weston's three catches went for touchdowns. 23-20 USD at that point. Fourth quarter now, Coyotes with a chance to make it a two-score game. Strebler's pass is picked off in the end zone by Xavier Williams. And the defense would get a stop, so USD would actually end up getting the ball back with less than six minutes to play in this one. But watch out, the turnover bug bites again. Kai Henry fumbles, Jared Farley recovers for UNI. And he takes it back to the Coyotes 11 yard line deep in USD territory. Now two plays later, Marcus Wymiller 
gets the handoff. He rumbles eight yards to give the Panthers their first lead of the day. It's 27-23 in favor of Northern Iowa. Now the Coyotes have plenty of time to answer, but the UNI defense delivers the dagger right here. Third and long, Keelan Brookins picks off Strebler and no one will catch him. He's up the sideline, 29 yards for the pick six, and that would do it. The Coyotes did get a touchdown late, but it was too little, too late. UNI deals USD its second loss of the season by a count of 34 to 29. Strebler with another big day through the air. He's actually thrown for 400 plus in both of the Coyotes losses this season. South Dakota actually dominated the box score, outgaining UNI 490 to 283. But red zone struggles and those four turnovers come back to haunt them. It took great belief when you're sitting on the three yard line and they're going to go into score to finish down there. And we were gassed. We were tired. Their defense, you can we were leaving it on the field, but they made a play. And then they went back and made another play on the fumble and then the intercept for the touchdown. I mean, it was, it was a great sequence of plays with, at the end of a football game, and that's how you win. When you look back on it, and you're gonna, we're going to look and say that we had multiple times that, you know, we could have uh, either separated the game a little bit more or, or obviously made it harder um, for, for Northern Iowa to, to have to um, you know, execute and, and uh, you know, we give them the ball at the 20-yard line there late in the game. That's, uh, that's not very good football. Whatever. Take 24 hours, watch the film of this game, learn from it, and then we got to come back in on Monday and refocus and have a great week of practice. I mean, you know, it's all, we got two, two really hard teams left at the end of this regular season schedule, as you said, and, um, and we're going to need to come in and play our, play our best football if we're going to want to have a chance to win. Coming up next, we break down the weekend's FCS matchups with our expert panel in Saturday Storyline. Stay tuned.